Let's grow. What's up, athletes and parents of athletes? Welcome to the Growth Kingdom with me, Coach D, where mediocrity is the enemy, where we're trying to thrive, not just as athletes, but as people. We're pushing, we're passionate, and we work hard in order to thrive in our sport, to become the best version of ourselves in life, be leaders, be role models, be mentors. Let's do this thing. So, Today, I have something I'm passionate about, man, and the topic is on adversity because I've been through a ton of adversity in my life, and I've trained tons of athletes and people that have dealt with adversity at a much higher level than me, and we all struggle with roadblocks and setbacks and obstacles, right, that are, that are unique to us, that are specific to us, and that's how it's meant to be, that in order to reach your highest level, you have to go through immense amounts of adversity. Guys, understand this. You will never discover your true self and the potential that God has for you if you're not going through difficult times. If you don't go through adversity every now and then, if you don't go through setbacks, if you don't struggle every now and then, and sometimes it can feel paralyzing. Sometimes you can go through stuff and it feel like you have no idea how you're going to figure it out. And it's those critical moments that if you use them with intention, if you use adversity with its purpose, which is to sculpt and mold you into becoming the best version of yourself, then you will continue to evolve and elevate and transform who you are real time. That's the only way to really discover how good or how great you can possibly become as an athlete. Any athlete out there, if everything is all great, if it's always been a complete, consistent uphill journey for you, I'm sorry to say that, but that at some point, you're going to get smacked right upside your mouth and realize, holy crap, I don't have any background. I don't have any foundation to work off of because I've never been through these moments before. And it's those moments that for a lot of athletes, a lot of high-level athletes, when they do get hit with adversity, maybe they were the best athlete, middle school, best athlete, high school, they get to college, and now all of a sudden everybody's the best athlete. Best athlete. It's those it's those kids that get to that level in college that get cut from the team. Like, they quit the team. They realize, holy crap, I've never been through adversity and I have no idea what this feels like, so I'm just going to quit. Guys, understand this. You have to be pushing yourself and putting yourself in discomfort, putting yourself in uncomfortable situations in order to grow yourself, in order to grow your mindset. You will never know the healing power of a Band-Aid if you never cut yourself. You'll never know the, the, the power of a doctor if you never break a bone. You'll never know how truly great you could be if you don't go through struggle and go through suck and then embrace it and endure it and become better from it. So I'm going to give you guys a master class on the benefits of adversity. That adversity is there to help you. It's there to guide you. Adversity is there to make you better. I remember when I was in high school, okay, I trained my tail off. There was very, very few people that I've ever met in my life to this point still, high school kids, that I can honestly say they worked harder than me in high school. Very few, very few kids I can say worked harder than me. I mean, I was setting my alarm clock 2.30 in the morning to slam a protein shake and eat a peanut butter and jelly because I needed to gain weight. I was so maniacal and crazy about becoming the best version of myself because I saw it in my older brother. My older brother, two-time All-American, Duke University, uh, full scholarship athlete, absolute unit. I mean, this dude used to lock himself in his bedroom the day before a, a race because he was a runner. And we wouldn't see him for an entire day because he was just getting and tapping in mentally. I mean, this dude was next level, right, psycho in terms of trying to reach the pinnacle of success that we set for ourselves. And I worked so freaking hard in high school. So hard, day in, day out, rain, sleet, snow didn't matter. In my senior year, I snapped my ankle second week of my senior year. I mean, I worked my tail off all high school, training every single day, six, sometimes seven days a week, all year round. Some of you athletes out there are in the middle of your season and then tell yourself, I don't want to train in season. I don't want to do too much. Dude, I was up 5 o'clock in the morning to hit the gym before class. I was going from football practice to the gym. Football practice would end 6.30. I would get my stuff, go to the gym for two hours, not get home till 9, 
9 30 at night eat dinner shower then do my homework go to bed 11 11 o'clock 11 30 do it all over again day in day out and a lot of you kids and parents will hear this and say oh you're doing too much no I wasn't doing enough. I wasn't doing enough of the right things because even through college, guess what I realized? Everybody was doing that. Everybody was doing that. And parents, you know this, that in life, if you really want to get ahead, really want to thrive, really want to make something of yourself, then you have to, you have to come with a different mentality and mindset of really what it takes to be your best self. So I'm doing all this work. I remember I played quarterback and it snowed and it was like five, six inches of snow. And I go to the football field, mind you, I didn't need mommy or daddy telling me to go to the football field. I went to the football field, grabbed a snow shovel, shoveled off a 10-yard by 3-yard, you know, box in the snow so I could work on my three-step, five-star, five-step drop by myself, throwing into the snow, gra running, grabbing the ball. It's wet, it's cold, working my three-step drop, throwing the ball, setting up, you know, buckets, setting up T-shirts on the goalpost. And then second week of my senior year, I snapped my ankle. So let's talk about adversity. That's just one example of many. Athletes understand this too, right? Like, you know, I'm an adult now. I have a family now. But guess what? All throughout life, you're going to go through adversity. All throughout life. If you learn this now as an athlete, and that's why sports is so amazing in sculpting kids' mindset and character and discipline, if we use it for the tool that it is, it's so critical in their development. Athletes, kids, I don't care if you're 13, 19, 22, I don't care where you are in your journey, if you're going through adversity right now or not, pay attention to this. Pay attention to these, to these five skills I'm going to give you, these five ideas, these five perspectives that I'm going to give you of handling adversity, how you can deal with adversity and dominate it and win every single time. So let's dive in. Number one, adversity reveals the true heart of you. Adversity reveals you to you. When you come through a struggle, an obstacle, and you're at this critical moment where you can quit, where you can regress, or you can bust through the wall and move forward, at that juncture right there, athletes, when you deal with adversity at that level, it reveals yourself to you. That if you are a, a, a if you're honest with yourself, if you're truly who you say you are, or if you're a fraud. When you come through struggle, athletes, it will reveal yourself to you. Are you a fraud or are you real? Are you, are you who you said you are? Are the goals that you have truly the goals that you have? Are you someone who truly is dedicated or not? And, and regardless of what the answer is, you have a choice. You have a choice at that moment through struggle. No matter who you are or who you've discovered you truly are, you have a moment right there to make yourself better and redirect the path and course for yourself to get on the right path that God has laid out for you or quit or prove to yourself that you are a fraud and so you're always going to be a fraud. I'm going to be honest. I've trained a lot of kids over my years that five years down the road from when they were 16, 17, 18 years old, now they're 22, 23, 24, they've realized that they've been a fraud. I see kids now that are graduating college and they're not doing so well. And it, it pains my soul because I invested so much time and so much energy into them, whether it was one month or two months or six months into them. And it, it just, it wouldn't click for them because no one can give you this. No one can make you, make you accept this fact and reality that when you come through struggle and adversity, you can humble yourself, better yourself, rethink, realign, and out-deliver the person you were yesterday or you can keep being the same person. And the athletes that stay on that same path, who are 24 now, who will be 28, who will be 30 years old, I'm sorry to say will be the same ones that when they're adults are saying, man, I could have been so much more. I should have been so much more. I would have been so much more if I would have just listened. Adversity is going to reveal the true heart of you. So as you guys go through adversity, I want you to take a step back and reflect and reveal to yourself and think, who am I? Am I someone who's going to rise up to the occasion or am I going to quit? Am I someone who's going to hit this thing head on even though it sucks, even though it hurts? Or I'm, am I someone who's going to fold and go in a fetal position and quit and all my potential is going to die? Who do you want to become athletes? Parents, who are your, are your kids going to become? 
You have to put them around coaches and mentors who will teach this stuff to them, who will sow into them. If you're hiring coaches or trainers for your kids who are only doing speed training or only doing strength training and it's passive coaching and they're not instilling this stuff into your kids, parents, let me tell you something. Your kids will never discover their full potential in life. If your kid is training right now with someone who's only handling the speed and the strength and the, and the let's go and that's it and not instilling life skills into them and sewing into them and mentoring into them, then you're wasting your time and you're wasting your money. You guys need to be listening to this and be with someone every single day who's going to sow this into your heart, who's going to plant these seeds into your heart because you're going to come to moments sometimes, kids, athletes, people, where you're going to have no other choice. It's going to be so depressing and so freaking hurtful if you're honest with yourself. And you have to have heart in that situation. And the only way you develop that heart is by going through crappy freaking times and having enough faith to say, I'm not going to quit. So I broke my ankle my senior year, right? The very next thing that I did was I went to the, the, um, the assistant pastor at my church and I'm like, hey, we need to meet. Like, I need prayer. Like, I don't know what else to do. And I wasn't the re- super religious type in high school. We went to church on Sundays, but kids, like, I wasn't really in it. Like, I was falling asleep in church sometimes. Like, I would go to youth group, but I wasn't really there. So, like, it didn't really work for me in high school. But at that moment, I just felt like the power of God was over me and he was like, lean on me. So, I went to Home Depot, got prayer over my ankle. And then went to the doctor's office, and for sure, they're like, yep, you snapped your ankle, man. Like, you're going to miss your senior year. And I'm like, you have to be kidding me, man. Like, I've been working my freaking tail off by myself in the gym, on the field, running hills, just freaking crushing workouts. And you're going to tell me that I have recruiting from Georgetown, Holy Cross, Bucknell, Lafayette, Boston College, Villanova. Like, you're going to tell me that I'm going to miss my entire senior season. And by the way, I'm not some freak athlete that will, that will keep the, the recruiting and will keep the scholarships and re- will keep the, the opportunity. I'm going to lose it all. And sure enough, I did. So I left that doctor's office. and I literally remember going home, freaking sobbing, crying. My dad's crying because he knows how hard I worked. Like I worked so hard, so hard. And it was just, I feel like it was taken from me right there. So I go home. I'm at home kind of sulking, kind of freaking having pity for myself. And then I'm just like, Dad, I'm going to the, going to the football field. It's like 8.30 at night. And he's like, uh, what? And I'm just like, I'm going to the football field. And I just left. Got my car, just left. Went to the football field. And I still have a picture <laughs> in my phone somewhere of, of the picture I took in the stands. Dark. Football is, is sitting in my lap in the field. And I remember sitting there just crying, just sobbing by myself. I'm 18 years old. Right. I'm the kid quarterback. Right. Like like all this popularity, like kids looking up to me and I'm at the football field crying like a baby with a huge boot on my ankle because I just snapped my ankle the day before. And I'm like, this is it. And I felt like my life was over for a second. I felt like it was all over. Like I'm, I'm literally thinking, like, what am I going to do? Like, this is it. This is done. Like, what am I going to do? And I remember. In that moment. That adversity revealed the true heart of me. In that moment, thinking back, I remember sitting there and I'm like, dog, you're not a quitter. Like, you're a unit. You're a dog. Like, you can have faith in God. Like, you've worked this hard to quit. You're going to let something like snap in your ankle, something small like that, breaking your ankle, stop you from these goals and dreams that you have and these ambitions that you have. And I remember getting a little pissed off in that moment that I even let myself get to that point. And I went home and it was game over. Like, it, from that moment in my life, it was game over. I'm like, any adversity I hit, it's a wrap. Like, I don't care what it is. Because I revealed to myself, no one could have done it for me. I had to do it for myself. And my mission is to help you guys do this for you. My mission is to help you athletes discover a power and a passion inside your heart that you never even realized was there. I had to do this for myself, but it was, it was a skill I feel like I had at that time that a lot of kids don't have, and I want to give it to you guys. Take a moment. Take some inventory. Reveal to yourself, who am I? What type of heart and soul do I have? I'm going to go in a fetal position and quit and give up, or am I going to rise up and be a dog and be a savage and be a warrior and hit this adversity head on? So it was, it was game over from there. I went home. I told my dad, it's a wrap. Like, I'm going to play this year. I'm not missing my whole senior year. I'm going to play this year. Watch. 
He's like, you sure? Like, I don't know. Doctor said, I'm like, I'm gonna play this year. Watch. Sure enough, they told me it was gonna take ten weeks. It took eight weeks, eight weeks for my ankle to heal. I don't know if that was, you know, uh, a happenstance, but I mean, it was God. It was God's supernatural power over me. Doctor said ten weeks. It healed in eight weeks. Doctors were like, your ankle healed really fast, but now we're gonna have to go into six months of rehab and da da da. And I go, nah, I'm playing next week. Like, straight up, I literally got my boot off and within one week played in a game against one of the best teams in the state, the best team in our conference, Montville High School, that used to roll us every year because my team, my high school team was not that good. My, team, my high school team kind of sucked, I'm being honest. Like, and played this team, Montville High School, and I threw three touchdowns that game. From broken ankle, sobbing at the football field, eight weeks later, boot coming off. My my right ankle was half the size of my left. My right leg was half the size of my left. I barely could freaking walk on it. I told the trainers, like I took, I took over, and I, and I like, I took over the process, right? Like, in that moment, I was demanding out of myself what to do next. That my right leg was half the size of my left. I have one week to prepare to play one of the best teams in the state. And I took control over my journey. I didn't need anybody to tell me. I'm 18 years old in high school. And I told the, the athletic trainer, nah, you're going to wrap up my ankle three times. I told the coach, I'm playing this week. I told my dad, I'm playing this week. I don't care what anybody else thinks. You can think it's selfish. You can think it's whatever. But I knew what I had inside my heart, and that was to be a performer, an overcomer, to take control over situations that I have control over. So I play that game, with uh, throw three touchdowns, and I'm like, told y'all, I'm here. And the next couple games went pretty well, got some film, sent it out. And in that moment, like, make a long story short now, is I went to boarding school, played there for a year, played in college, won a few championships. But that wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have set the path before me if in that moment I quit. Adversity is going to reveal the true heart of you athletes. And whether you're going through adversity now or not, you need to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. The way you train, the way you show up to the gym, the way you show up to practice, the way you show up to a game, the way you show up to film study, the way you show up to school, the way you show up to your study, your personal habits, your friend groups. You need to, you need to mold yourself, guys. You need to mold yourself. You need to take control of your process and your future and your journey because no one's going to do it for you. So if you ain't going through adversity... You better be putting yourself in uncomfortable situations. Otherwise, you're going to go your entire high school, college career and saying, what if I would have? What, what, what should I have done? Man, I regret not taking it more serious. Training is just a little part of the battle, right? Like getting faster, getting stronger is just a little piece of the puzzle. But the ones that become great and discover the true potential are the ones that are going through adversity, embracing struggle, and putting themselves in uncomfortable situations to to intentionally sculpt the best out of them. Number two, adversity is going to reveal your real intentions. When you go through struggle and intentions, you have a choice to either do things that you really said you wouldn't do or do the things more that you said you would do. What do I mean by this? My intention was to become the best football player I could possibly be. When I went through adversity, I could have either settled for average, settled for mediocrity, been an okay football player, which really would have just revealed to me that that's what I wanted all along, that when I come to a brick wall in front of me, that I'm just going to turn around the other way and walk down the street because I never wanted to be great anyway. Or I could have slapped the boot on, went to practice every day, which I did, and still practiced throwing the ball and still did what I could do, went to the gym every day, which is exactly what I did. I still have an upper body. I still have other like, which I love when parents ask or when kids ask, you know, coach, you know, so-and-so hurt themselves. You know, they have to take some time off from the gym. I go, are you insane? You're going to tell your kid because you hurt your leg, because you hurt your arm, that now they don't need to show up to the gym? Are you crazy? Like, all you just did for that kid was tell them when you get a little knocked down, you can take days off. When I snapped my ankle, the very next thing I did was got back in the gym because I have another leg and a fully functional upper body. I'm not going to not go to the gym because I got a boot on, a cast on, a this on, or that on because my hamstring hurts. Parents, stop. 
parents, you have if, if you haven't been an elite competitor, if you haven't had the goals your kids have, parents, listen up. If you're if you growing up didn't have the same goals, the same fire to be a great athlete, to be to be a collegiate athlete like your kids, stop placing your own limitations on your kids. If your kid wants to be an elite competitor, play D1, play in college, do not set limitations for them. Because all that's going to happen over time. When they get older, they're going to resent you. They're going to be unhappy. And they're going to regret their journey and wish that they went harder. They're going to wish that someone believed in them more. Stop placing your own limitations on your kids. If your kid gets hurt, stop telling them to take time off. Because when they get to college, and parents, you know this, when they get into real life, there are no days off. Your kid's going to get sick and then what? Say, Tell his boss, I got to take a week off from work. I got to take two weeks off from work. I'm a little down. I, I can't show up. They're going to start a business and say, man, you know, because of that pandemic, I got to go a little, I got to go a little softer. They're going to be the ones that close up shop. Stop it. When your kid gets a setback, you tell them to freaking go more, go harder, fight back, man. Because this world want to chew them up and spit them out. And parents, you know this for yourself too. So when your kid gets a little setback, what you should do is reveal their true intentions. Now, obviously be smart and obviously operate within wisdom and operate within real limitations. But let's not set up self-imposed limitations on these kids. Because adversity and setbacks and injuries and what, what have you, it's only going to reveal the real intentions of them. Do you really want to be great? Okay, when adversity comes, let's see if you still want to be great in that moment. You said you want to be a great teammate. Well, when you're down three scores, what are you going to do? Get upset at your teammates or be a leader and an inspiration and empathize with your teammates? Adversity is just going to reveal your true intentions. When the tide goes out, it's going to reveal who's been swimming with their pants down. What that means is when everything, when everything sucks, it, struggle and adversity is going to reveal who's real and who's fake, who's real and who's a fraud. And that's what I feel like so many kids have trouble with imposter syndrome is because every time they go through adversity, they, they, they step back. If you have imposter syndrome, maybe you deserve to have imposter syndrome because when you, when you deal with difficulty, you show yourself that everything that you say and think that you are, you're not, you, you don't act that way. Actions speak louder than words, and actions will always be louder than your thoughts. So what actions are you going to take? So number three... Adversity is going to either destroy you or evolve you. That's it. There is no staying the same. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry, athletes. But adversity is only going to evolve you to be better or it's going to destroy your progression. You're not going to go through adversity and be the same. You're either going to be better or worse. That's it. That's the God's honest truth. It's either going to evolve you into being better and being more resilient and more, more, more confident and have more tenacity and have a stronger mindset and have better experience, or it's going to make you more weak-minded, more susceptible to quitting, more susceptible to doubt, more susceptible to anxiety, more susceptible to depression, more susceptible to quitting. That's it. It might not be, it might not automatically make you a quitter, but it might, you, might make you a little bit more, a little bit more hesitant. It might make you a little bit more, a little bit less than, it's like, it's like nicks at the armor. It's like death by a thousand cuts. Adversity is only going to evolve you or destroy. What you guys have to do is break up with quitting. When you guys go through adversity, you need to divorce quitting. You need to break up with quitting. You need to remove yourself from quitting, any type of quitting mentality. It needs to not even be an option in your mind. Athletes, you want to play collegiate. You want to be the best athlete you can be. You want to thrive in the world. You want to make money, have financial freedom. You want to accomplish all the dreams that I tell kids to have then quitting is not an option. Regressing is only a temporary thing. You can take a couple steps back, but you better not quit. You can take one to five steps back and realize, oh, oh, oh I'm regressing here, but then you show up and take 10 steps forward. That's the process, guys. That's what needs to happen. It's only going to destroy you or evolve you. It's only going to destroy you if you let it destroy you. Adversity is only going to limit you if you let it. It's a choice. It's a habit. It's a relationship. You have to develop a relationship with winning. Like Tim Grover says, if winning showed up, would it recognize you? 
Tim Grover, who trained Michael Jordan, who trained Kobe. A lot of people want to talk about Mamba mentality. Well, Tim Grover, the trainer of Kobe Bryant, said in his book, Relentless, if winning showed up, would it recognize you? What he's saying is, who are you? Is adversity revealing the true intentions of who you said you'd be and be a warrior and be a champion? Or is it just revealing you to be a loser and be a fraud? You have to develop a relationship with winning, a relationship with being a champion, a relationship to overcoming, a relationship to being a being someone who can persevere and endure. But that only happens through adversity and through your actions, your daily habits, your routines. Number four, adversity is your ultimate confidence builder or morale destroyer. Adversity is only going to make you a more confident, resilient human being or it's going to destroy your morale. You want to build resiliency and confidence, and conviction, and belief, go through something that borderline kills you, and then still keep going, and still keep trying, and still keep showing up, day after day after day. When I opened my gym at 23 years old, I graduated college, worked in the corporate world for a few months, quit, opened up my training business, because that was a dream of mine. I remember within about I, about 18 months of my gym journey, training kids just like you guys. I remember going home one night, being in fetal position, bawling my eyes out. I trained kids just like you, then went home, was on the living room floor in fetal position, bawling out my eyes out because I was struggling with depression, because I was struggling with so much anxiety that I couldn't even move my head because of adversity, because of struggles. And in that moment, I took a couple steps back. But in that moment, after a couple of days of showing up, of still coming, of still fighting, I brushed myself off. I got in the books. I got in the studies. I hired coach and I said, I am not a quitter because my senior year when I snapped my ankle and I wanted to quit and I lost all my recruiting and I wanted to stop. I still showed up, came back eight games later, threw three touchdowns and won. I'm going to win or win or win or win time and time again. You keep showing up. So now my confidence has grown as a person, as a man, as a business owner, as a competitor. It's grown exponentially because I know no matter what life throws at you, throws at me, I'm going to overcome. I'm not going to let it destroy my morale and, and make me pivot and do something else. I've hired so many coaches who quit at the first sign of struggle, who quit after the first sign of adversity. Well, they'll never be great. You will never be great if you don't let adversity build your resiliency and if you're a quitter because times are tough and things got hard, athletes. I'm giving you the real here. You have to. You have to love it. You want to be a champion? You want to play on Saturdays? You want to play on Sundays? Whatever day your, your professional sport plays, that's really what you want? All right. Then you better love adversity and discomfort. You better love it. You better marry it and embrace it and invite it because it's the only way to build your confidence and your resiliency and your conviction and belief in yourself. Number five is adversity also will build your leadership skills. Because adversity gives you experience. And through that experience of struggle, you'll have life lessons only learned through adversity. You have life lessons you can go give the next man up or next woman up. You'll have life lessons that you can do your own podcast, make your own content one day, help out your teammate, help out your family, help out your siblings. Because you went through stuff that sucks. No one likes hearing from someone who always won. No one likes that athlete that they read about. And they've always been good. We only like hearing the stories of the athlete, of the person who, like, went through the crappiest things and still overcame. Those are the stories that inspire us. Why? Because they're, they're realistic. They're relatable. They're authentic. You have to build that within yourself as well. You can't build leadership skills if you, don't have, if you haven't gone through adversity because you have nothing to lead. It's not realistic. That's not life. You can't help another athlete. You can't help your team if you've never been through adversity because when you're down a score, when you're down, when you're down and out, you're, you're, you're losing. What, what background, what experience, what resume have you built with adversity still overcome? We all love the stories of Tom Brady, you know, being down three scores, coming back and winning the game, right? This athlete, that athlete, being down, coming back and winning. The only reason why they were able to do that 
was because they have a history of doing that. The athletes that do great things and become great as human beings and as athletes and accomplish things and win games and win championships and build a legacy, the only ones that do that is because they've built up a history of doing that, of overcoming adversity, of overcoming struggle, of overcoming setback. The stuff that went behind closed doors when they're by themselves, they never shared with the world. They've been through some of the hardest, most depressing times in their life, and they've wanted to quit. All of them but they still show up despite it. They still show up time and time and time again. So I hope this empowers and enhances your guys' journey. Parents, I hope this enhances and empowers you as a parent and in your kid's journey to perform for life, to show up for your team, to show up for your family, to show up for you every single stinking day, day in and day out. To do uncommon things, you have to be uncommon. To be uncommon, you have to operate like someone that is uncommon. You have to believe you're uncommon. Be extraordinary. Be unique. That's how God created you. So, Growth Kingdom, I hope this empowers you guys. And if this was valuable, do me a favor. Help us out. Help you out. Share this with a friend. Share this with a family member. Share this with a team. Share this with someone you think would benefit from this. And if it's truly valuable to you, please leave this a five-star rating. I would love it and I would appreciate it. I work hard and I'm passionate out this for you guys. And it encourages me to know that this is valuable to you. And to reach out to me, go to Upward Athlete Academy on Instagram at Upward Athlete Academy. Go there on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. You can direct message me, follow there, engage in the content and get more value there. So I appreciate you guys. Stay blessed. I hope that you thrive and do amazing, amazing things in this life. I'll see you in the next one. I'm Coach D, Upward Athlete Academy. Go thrive. Stay blessed. I'm out. See you.